Welcome to the recap show on the Baseball Awakening Podcast with Jeff Rothmeyer. Today, we will discuss the lessons learned and the action items from yesterday's interview. Hey guys, Jeff Rothmeyer here with the Baseball Awakening Recap Show, where I share with you the biggest takeaway I got from my conversation with Dana Cavalera as well as share with you how I plan to implement what I've learned with my players that train with me at my academy in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And again, as I always say, we want to hear from you because different things mean different things to different people. So it'd be interesting to see how you guys interpreted something that Dana said yesterday or something that I'm going to say today. And I'm going to make a show where I read these emails off because we can all learn something from it. So my email is going to be Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, at BaseballAwakening.com. So send me your thoughts, your comments, and your feedback. Yeah, so my conversation with Dana started with me asking about his story and making his way into becoming the head strength and conditioning coach for the New York Yankees. And what's cool about it was that this was the job that he wanted. He worked for free for three to four years as an intern, and he worked his tail off to get the opportunity that he did. Now, when he got home, he worked with kids, did, did some training with them, but then when spring training came, he went right back to work. You know, this was the sacrifices that he needed to make and the sacrifices that were needed to make in general. You know, to get to that level where you're training the best athletes in the world, you got to be good at what you do. And and in their own right, they are professionals. They have the same day in and day out grind because the hours are long. And at any level, it doesn't matter what, what department or any level you are at the professional rank, there are long hours and it's a grind every day. So it's great to tell our kids that if baseball doesn't work out for you and you think you want to be a part of a professional organization, then that's great. There's going to be a lot of hard work. There's going to be a lot of sacrifice that needs to be made, just as there was when you played baseball. So while I feel like I know a little bit about the strength and conditioning field and it's something that I enjoy reading about and learning about, it was great to interview someone who had worked with players at the highest level and the process that he used to help these guys maintain a professional athlete. And, you know, currently right now in my facility, we don't do strength and conditioning, although we'd like to change that. But I get asked all the time from parents, what are the best programs for my son? You know, I get asked about CrossFit. I get asked about Olympic lifting. I get asked about yoga. And I think Dana said it best. They're the place for everything but the key is to get a staff so i so this is what i'm gonna start telling parents is you need to find someone that will properly assess your son and then from there they have to build a solid foundation and there's nothing sexy about the foundational building process but if you want to be strong you want to get fast and you want to move weight that you haven't thought about then the foundation has to be there. You got to get the foundation right. So I go on to ask Dana about in-season training. And, you know, the in-season training is going to be different for a guy at that level where they play, you know, 162 games plus spring training plus postseason in X amount of days. So it's going to be different for those guys than it would be for the high school guy or even the college guy. But I like what he said was, he said, never forget that the number one priority in playing the game is playing the game. The number one priority is playing the game. So your training should never interfere with the guy being able to play a game. Here's the truth, here's the truth story. I had a guy one time, and he told me that his coach made the entire team lift super heavy. They were all lifting like, I think 75, 85, maybe 90% of their max within an hour or two before the game. And a lot of guys 
did not play very well that day, you know, and th- that got into the way of their game. Now, if this is a part of their normal routine, then that's fine. But to make the entire team do it, man, that's crazy. So your training cannot get into the way of the player's ability to play the game. He goes on to say that as the season progresses and the workload progresses, then the training volume has to go down. But he also said that the key throughout the season is to stay on top of the mobility issues. You know, there's a common belief that the way things are done in the, at the major league level, they're way behind. And maybe this is the case, but it seems with Dana that they're not behind. And he takes an individual part seriously instead of a, you know, one for all type of program. So, so this is something that we need to tell kids is that, you know, the, you need a program that's kind of individualized to you. You know, and that's the problem with CrossFit and some of these weight programs is that everyone's doing the same thing. And it, and I get it easier. I mean, you know, we're limited on time and resources. But what I would do is I'd go and find a PT that can assess you throughout the year, especially if baseball is really what you want to do. You know, it's easier to stay on top and maintain than to have to start at ground zero all the time. Another thing that Dana said that I really liked was he created what he called the conveyor belt system where everyone knew what was going on and and there was structure. He goes on to talk about how players want and need structure to include the players at the big league level. Now, he also said something that I really liked was that professional athletes don't need a lot of variety. They don't need the latest and the greatest and the core thing out there. You know, his programming actually goes 25 to 30% is the weight training part. And then 70% is the preparatory work. <laughs> Not sexy at all, but, but that's what works. And these guys know that. And, and they will, if, if it works for them, they'll repeat a routine until it's exhausted. You know, the problem with a lot of people is that they're not willing to stick to something long enough to see the benefit of it. So when you're constantly changing things up, yeah, you may get that initial boost because it's exciting and it, and it's different, but the result will not be consistent and it's not going to be sustainable. You know, so I tell my guys all the time, everything that we do on my plate is a routine. And because we stick to it, they get results. And what we see a lot is the players will go join their team and things will fall apart. And then they come to me and then, and everything looks like it's fine. And and why? It's because we have a routine that they follow that allows them to be the best. If they were to kind of take that routine to their team practice or develop a routine or have a routine prior to game, and they repeat it each time, over time you'll see the player be more consistent. So that's why it's important for someone like me. I have to get out and go watch these guys play because they do so well in my plays, and they're consistent in my plays. So it's all about having the right routine. As Dana said, the routine is the foundation to success. So now I'm asking Dana about, talk a little bit about the off season and what that looks like. And he says that the first four weeks, they do nothing. He goes, they, you have to unplug. Everyone has to unplug at some point throughout the year. This go, 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 go mentality robbed a lot of people from being the best that they can be because they, they don't unplug. So, but then he said, then once they return training, it gets back into the movement of things and back to building the foundation. A lot of guys do not want to take care of their foundation work. But if you want to keep improving, then the foundation has to be strong and it has to be stable. So taking a few steps back to ensure that the foundation is strong and stable will allow you to jump forward. This is something that we talk about with our kids and we do the same thing 
except for we do with hitting and pitching. You know, as soon as the off season starts, we'll, 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 we'll take a step back and we're going to rebuild the foundation and then move forward. So it's kind of the same, same concept. The, the foundation part in anything is, is huge. And another thing that Dana shared that I thought was, was really good was he said that understand that putting on size and mass isn't the goal as a baseball player. It's all about improving power output. This was something that I got away from it that I'm going to start telling our parents about. You know, I'm going to start saying, hey, you need to be, if you ask me about strength and conditioning, here's what needs to happen. You need to find someone that will assess you. You need to find someone that will help you build a solid foundation. And the focus needs to be on power output. So from there, I ask him, okay, let, let's just say I got a guy and he's going to the internet. And he said, look, he goes, the internet is very dangerous. It's a very dangerous place. You know, there's a lot of bad information that can hurt you from a strength and conditioning standpoint or even a baseball standpoint. You know, so the program that you found on the internet that Mike Trout does, it's not going to have the same effect on you. So that's why it's important that you find someone that can assess you, that can help you build the solid foundation and help you develop your own routine you know, specifically for you and your and your goals. Now we get to the end of the conversation, which I enjoyed. I asked him, I said, what were some of the lessons that you learned from some of the best players in the world? And the first thing he said was, what he learned was, it wasn't so much the time on the job, it's what you were doing with that time. So right now, a lot of... Like the the saying right now, you know, be the first one there and be the last one to leave. And what he's saying at that level, that's not necessarily the case. He's saying that, but when they're there, they don't waste time. They're not they're not jacking off. They are they're spending some, they're, some quality time executing their routine. You know, and this is something that I think we need to be careful how we tell kids this. I think you know. They need to learn, you know, show up early and leave last. But I think what has to happen is they need to understand how to use their time wisely. So what I tell kids all the time is you don't need to spend four to five to six, seven, eight hours a day training unless you want to. But you need to find an hour to get your work in. And this has got to be an hour outside of what your team does. This is something that you do specifically for you. Find an hour, so five, six, seven hours a week to work on just you outside of your team setting. This extra hour will show up and it will accumulate. So you need to pick, as Dana said, pick five things and do them really, really well. Check in boxes and you'll be amazed with the result. And, and I agree with Dana there. You know, that's the, that's the approach that I've taken over the last couple of years. It just... Focus on checking in boxes as much as you can. And then the last thing I'm going to share on this recap show is Dana said, you have to trust the process. And there's going to be days where you don't see progress. But that doesn't mean it's not happening. So you have to trust the process. This is something that I say to our kids all the time. Trust the process. Check in boxes. And it will all come together. So I hope this recap show um, brings a little insight as to what I got from it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Email me at jeff, G-E-O-F-F, at baseballawakening.com. <laughs>